This video is gonna be a weird one. Judging by the title and thumbnail, you might have already been able to correctly deduce that we're kind of straying away from the realm of our usual topics today, and instead taking a look at a subject that I never in a million years thought I would have to make a video on. We're not doing the normal stuff, like talking about weird Roblox accessories, or crazy Roblox events from the olden days of 2007, or even another rant about a personal topic that only I care about. No, this is a story of deceit and betrayal, corporations and greed, futurism and dystopia. And it all started with this random weird core game for some reason. I don't even know how. Explore Dream Core Weird Core Doors is a game that, despite its questionable title, has done very well for itself, racking up over 11.5 million visits, and for good reason. It's a recreation of those nostalgia-based liminal space pictures that everyone online used to be into for some reason, and it's actually pretty breathtaking. It has amazing lighting effects and well-built showcase areas to make you really feel like you're immersed in the nostalgia. It's also full of secrets to uncover through its mini hidden passageways and foreboding-looking doors. Even though it's lost a lot of its popularity as the liminal spaces trend it's based upon has done the same, it's still an undeniably great looking game. I first became aware of this game around a month or two ago, when I was looking for a game to use as b-roll footage for my video Should We Really Be Worried About Roblox UGC Plus Channel Updates. Since that video didn't really have a specific theme, I needed something good looking and random to play for its b-roll footage. I decided to search Weirdcore, an aesthetic that I'm a pretty big fan of, and this game was the first result. It looked good, and it seemed as random as it gets, so I thought it would be a good choice. So I joined the game, fired up the old Xbox Game Bar game recorder, and started exploring all the weird areas. But in the very first area I explored, a recreation of that farmhouse image that everyone who's ever gone to the eye doctor just narrowed their eyes in abject fear at the instant I showed it, I found something really weird. Beyond the grassy fields, beyond the farmhouse, beyond the cluster of floating upside down cows, I found this. A mysterious, bright blue, futuristic portal. And this portal was incredibly disappointing. When I entered the portal, I was expecting to be taken to some sort of cool, vapor-wavy, cyberpunk-looking area or something. I mean, I'm playing a game about mysterious aesthetic areas, and a portal like this would fit in perfectly. It looks foreboding, like it's part of some long-abandoned secret government project, almost dangerous to use. It's even covered in grass, giving it that perfect disused look. It looks like a perfectly integrated progression through the levels of this game. But no, when I entered through that portal, I got a prompt from the Metaverse Game Network asking whether I wanted to visit Free Admin Game, or um, oh yeah, free admin game! So, what on earth was free admin game? Was it promotion for another game that the dev owned, or was it some sort of meme that the devs of this game decided to insert just for laughs? There had to be some sort of explanation for this, so I decided to stop the b-roll recording session for now and find out. I clicked yes to teleport, and nope, this is just a classic clickbaity free admin game. The game had 3 million visits somehow and was made by Tesla Compared, who upon a quick profile stalking session I now know is 1. Notorious for these types of games, and 2. Is not related to the dev of this weirdcore game, Alien Dan Blocks, in any way. They're not friends, they don't follow each other, they don't even share any important groups. There was no reason at all for this guy to be promoting this guy's game, and there was even less of a reason for Free Admin Game to have the exact same portal that Explore Dreamcore Weirdcore Doors has. Wait, what? Yes, that's right, this game had the exact same portal model as this completely unrelated game, only blue, but guess what? It didn't try to send me back to the Weirdcore game. It asked me if I wanted to go to Texting Simulator by Sharkfin Studios LLC, and this game and its studio is, near as I can tell, completely unrelated to both the Weirdcore game and Free Admin game. And it also has another portal. Same exact design, same exact UI, what the heck is going on? So at this point, if you're like me, you're probably starting to put the pieces together in your head already. This must be some sort of new trending free model, where anyone who takes it and puts it in their game will become part of a giant network of promotion, where anyone who travels through the portal will get sent to a random other game with the portal, and everyone gets to share their visitors equally. Players of one game can potentially discover hundreds of other cool games to play, and everyone benefits. That sounds really cool. I want to download that model for my games right now. Well, I scoured the free model library using every possible keyword I could think of that might lead me to this wonderful model. And nothing. 
Nothing for Blue Portal, nothing for Metaverse Games Network, nothing for Random Game Portal. It simply didn't exist. And weirder still, when I tried the Portal and Texting Simulator, it led me to a little game known as Nickiverse, which just so happens to be an official brand-sponsored Roblox experience. What was Nickelodeon, a company with millions and millions of dollars, doing hooked up to this supposed underground ring of game promotion? Why was I unaware that Nickelodeon even had a sponsored Roblox game in the first place? And most importantly, where was their own Blue Portal? I searched this game for a while and just couldn't find one. That would mean that somehow Nickelodeon was reaping all of the visits from other games in the network but not giving any back, which is obviously incredibly shady. Something deeper was going on here. I needed to figure this out. So another pattern with all the games I'd found so far, besides the fact that they were all connected to this network, was that they all had millions of visits each. Free Admin Game had 3 million visits, The Weird Core Game had 11.6 million visits, and Texting Simulator had a whopping 195 million visits. Whether it was due to their own merit or due to the help from this Metaverse Games network, these games were all major hits. So it's stood to reason that they've probably been talked about on the internet a lot. And in all of this documentation, at least one person must have noticed these portals, right? Well, no. I cannot find a single mention of the Metaverse Game Network related to Roblox anywhere online at all. Now, you may be thinking to yourself that maybe it's just not as mainstream as I thought it was, right? Sure, this network may have a portal in a game with 195 million visits, but that game is basically a corpse now. It only gets around 50 to 150 concurrent users nowadays. Maybe the network is only connected to these four specific games and nothing else. So I decided to do a bit more exploring. Over the course of two full days, I spent most of my time visiting the games that I had already found with portals, going through their portals, and compiling a list of all the games the portals sent me to. And in Doing so, I found out some interesting things about this little network. Turns out the network is massive and has at least 78 different games connected to it, each of which has millions and millions of visits, except these Ripple Reef ones, but we'll get to that later. Many of these games are probably titles you know, such as Seaboard City RP, Pet Show Dress Up, Freeze Tag, Mega Fun Obby, and Obby King. The most popular connected game I could find was actually the iconic dress-up game Fashion Famous, which currently has a cool 1.8 billion visits and still pulls several hundreds of thousands of visits per day. But strangely, along with these serious and successful games, there were also several games I discovered that were, uh, how can I put this? Oh yeah, absolute trash. Aside from that free admin game I mentioned before, which just use your eyes. We had Jeep Ride into Foppy, a game from the same dev as that free admin game. We had several tycoons that were all made with the same exact engine, wouldn't have guessed. We had Water Park Oceanic, which somehow looks like it was made entirely of free models even though it wasn't. And we had a game called Poop Eating Simulator. Imagine having a game of yours share the same exact network of connected games as a game called Poop Eating Simulator. I would delete my game in a heartbeat, honestly. It seems like the one and only prerequisite your game needs to get into this network is just having a lot of visits. The games in this network vary heavily in quality, as you just saw, age with the oldest being from 2009 and the newest being from mid-2022, and much more. But the one thing they have in common is their millions of visits. In fact, it seems like you don't even need to have another portal in your own game to be connected to the network by other games' portals, or at the very least, if you do have one, it doesn't have to be easy to find. Obbies like Mega Fun Obby, Escape the Vegan Restaurant, and Escape the School all have their portals at the end of the Obby, not the beginning. This is especially concerning for Mega Fun Obby because that game has nearly 3,000 stages to traverse at this point, meaning that new players from other games in the network will likely never see that portal and just keep playing Mega Fun Obby. Very clever, Bloxton. But yeah, some of these games just flat out don't have portals set up at all. The Flash Infinite Earths, Emergency Frankfurt, 8 Car Driver Racing, and Little Crazy's Tower Scary Obby are just a few examples. But the phenomenon seems to be much more prevalent in the Metaverse Game Network's small but omnipresent catalog of brand-sponsored games. Yes, we've already talked about Nickelodeon's Nickverse game, but if you thought that was the only sponsored game in the network, you were sorely mistaken. There's City Slam Survival, sponsored by Lunchables 100% Juice, which has players compete to see who can smash the most stuff in a randomly generated Lunchables-themed map. There's also Cosmo & Friends Team Battle, sponsored by the Cosmo Toy Robot brand, where you can play as one of three Cosmo-related characters in various minigames. And of course, we can't forget about the Elf on the Shelf Snowball Fight, where you, believe it or not, have a snowball fight in the Elf on a Shelf universe. Now, these four games are all... 
okay. They're pretty well built, and they have some fun aspects to them, but they're also pretty forgettable, and it's kind of hard to have fun when you're constantly being blasted with brand advertising. With the Roblox community's negative attitude towards games like this, it seems like these games are sort of destined to fail after like a month max. Roblox never even promoted these games anywhere themselves. They never appeared on the events tab, they never had any exclusive avatar accessories made for them, they were never even mentioned on Roblox's Twitter. They were simply released, like any average game. And yet, against all odds, they managed to climb to millions of visits, and still have concurrent players to this day. Why does the Nickverse, a hangout game riddled with cringy Nickelodeon branding, have more activity right now than Undefeated, a well-built independent game that pits players against each other in epic gladiator-style challenges, even though they're part of the exact same metaverse game network? Well, Undefeated has a portal leading people out of the game, and the Nickverse only has players coming in. This is the same for all four of the current sponsored games. They don't have portals to lead people to other games in the network like everyone else does. Once you reach a sponsored game, that's the end of the road for you. You're forced to just stay there forever. Or until you exit the game, but most people will stick around and explore for a while before calling it quits, and the developers know that. They don't care whether or not you have a good experience. As long as you enter the game and have no way of immediately leaving, that's all they need. Another suspicious aspect to these sponsored games is the amount of promotion they receive in comparison to the other games. These portals are a lot like place roulette. If you enter one and it tries to take you to a game you don't want to go to, all you have to do is wait and it'll suggest a new game. You can click the button to tell it you don't want to teleport to that game, but all that does is make the teleportation prompt pop up go away. The game it wants to take you you two only changes after a set interval of time. However, I think this interval of time is longer for the sponsored games than for anything else. The recording you're seeing right now is of me standing in the portal and waiting for it to try to take me somewhere else besides the elf on the shelf snowball fight for five whole minutes. This footage is sped up. I eventually just stopped recording because it wasn't budging and I had to exit the game and rejoin, at which point I walked over to the portal again and it still wanted to take me to the Elf on the Shelf snowball fight. I experienced similarly long wait times with all the other sponsored games, and sometimes it would show me multiple different sponsored games in a row, which could be a coincidence, but since there's 78 games in total and only four sponsored games, it seems pretty unlikely that that would happen more than once. I experienced these lengthy wait times with sponsored games much more than non-sponsored ones, which, again, could be a coincidence. But after learning who's really behind this entire operation, I kinda doubt it. While I was joining all of these games in order to explore the full scope of these portals, I realized that if I was going to make a video about them, I would need to learn a lot more about this network than just the games it contained. At the very least, I needed to know the answers to the six basic information gathering questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. I had the what and the where pretty much covered, but for everything else, I needed to dive deeper. So I began sending out private messages to every game dev involved with this network that I could find that had their messages open. Hello, I'm Nitro. I make video essays about obscure facts and stories connected to the Roblox platform. I'm interested in knowing the purpose behind your metaverse portals in your game. I recently discovered a bunch of them all across Roblox and I cannot determine what they're for. No one seems to have talked about them online. The only thing I can gather is that they seem to be for partnership and sponsor purposes, but none of the linked games seem to be related. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to answer the following. What is the metaverse games network? How did you find out about it? When slash why did you add the portals? And what are they for? Please let me know if you can answer this. If you can't because of some sort of NDA or something, let me know that as well. I'm trying to gather as much much information as possible on these portals for a potential video, and if you can help me on this in any way, I'll be sure to shout you out. Thanks, Nitro. And in just an hour or so, I got a response. On Discord. The game Waterpark Splash World is one of the games that are, as of this video's publishing, involved with the Metaverse Game Network. Its owner, Arson Girl, unfortunately had her Roblox messages turned off, but I noticed that the game had a Discord server in its social links. So I joined it, found Arson's Discord, messaged her, and... She didn't have DMs on, and she wouldn't accept my friend request either. But then I found her group director, Ethan, and he was able to tell me what I needed to know. Hey there. That's actually called a Dubit portal, and it's something we signed up to be a part of. I believe it was something offered to us while our game was on the front page. So thanks so much to Ethan for cluing me in on this. You should definitely check out his game. It's a lot better than Waterpark Oceanic, and it's actually pretty entertaining. Now I had a who, a when, and a how. And all I needed was a why. Why does this network exist? Why is it so secretive? Why is it affiliated with all of these random brands? Oh. And I had an extra what to answer now. What is Dubit? We make awesome Roblox games. Dubit has built a world-class Roblox team, experienced in creating games with billions of players. Our team is helping some of the biggest toy companies, broadcasters, and brands join the metaverse, either through building their very own experience or partnering with an already successful game in Roblox. Okay, where's the part about random game portals? Well, that answer lies on their other website, dubit.io, which I found after searching Roblox, quote, metaverse game network, end quote. This website was the only result other than a singular Reddit post asking about the network, which had 
since been deleted. We can drive players from our game network into your experience from our metaverse game network for a specific launch period to keep your traffic popping. Our in-house portal technology and SDK is deployed by over 70 developer partners in their games, which act as a hyperlink to your own experience. So, after all that, we finally have a why. All they're looking to do is help your game get traction by funneling players of other games to your game. It costs money, just like any other form of advertising, but the end result is a healthy boost in traffic and a new way for players to find more games. Everyone wins in the end. So, I guess I'm a liar then? What's so shady about this? Why did I even make this video? Well, think about what this video has been up to this point. I haven't told you anything about why I think the Metaverse Game Network is shady. All I've told you about is how I got to discovering the details of the network in the first place. If I had just flat out told you this exists and here's why it's shady, this would have been a very short video. But in telling you how I discovered that it exists, I've been able to turn it into a conventionally longer one. That's not good. It should not have taken me this long to tell you what this is and why it exists. None of these games make that clear. The most they say is that it teleports you to partner experiences, which is the biggest description in the world. Dubit's name is nowhere on this. They've done almost nothing to publicize this program whatsoever. We don't know how much this costs. We don't know why some games have to include portals and others don't. We don't know whether this game selection is random or algorithmically based. We really don't know anything. Which isn't illegal, I don't think, but it's still shady. And that doesn't even mean they're necessarily out of the realm of illegality either. According to Byte Science, quote, Advertising regulations prescribe that digital advertising should be recognized recognizable for children by using an advertising disclosure." End quote. This is why you see things like This Is Advertising in the description of Lunchables' City Slam game, or Copyright 2022 Viacom International Inc. in the description of the Nickverse game. We want young children to be able to recognize when they're being advertised to. But when players teleport to a game directly from another game, they don't see the description of the game they're teleporting to. They never get to read that advertising disclosure. They just automatically go there. Now, despite how I'm talking right now, I don't really know much about the law. All I really know is what I found out five minutes ago during my my research. But to my layman eyes, it seems like this teleportation is in fact a circumvention of that advertising law. Because once a player is in a sponsored game, the extent of that advertising disclosure ends. Companies don't think they need it anymore because they assume that the kids have already read the game's description. Meanwhile, the kids are busy hanging out in high heels, Abby, which makes your character look like this, being asked to buy NFTs from Rebecca Minkoff so they can compete in an esports tournament. At best, it's a grave oversight on Dubit's part, and at worst, it's a loophole that they're evilly exploiting. Either way, I don't like it. But maybe you don't care about all of that. At the end of the day, the primary advertised feature of this network is game promotion. If underappreciated games are getting all the new traffic they paid for, then that's great. Dubit has fulfilled its purpose, and that's all that really matters. Can you guess what I'm about to say next? Yeah, they're not doing that. According to this update log from our new friends at Waterpark Splash World, they added their Metaverse Game Network portal on June 13th of 2022. Ethan told us that this was when their game was at the peak of its popularity. It achieved over 12.3 million visits, so at one point it must have been averaging thousands of concurrent players. One would think that with the constant promotion from the Metaverse Game Network, this game would have easily maintained the level of popularity it was at back then. And yet, nowadays, it's fallen to around 25 to 150. And when you think about it even a little bit, it makes sense. Most games in this network seem to be required to put a portal in their game in order to receive players from other games as portals. You might think that this wouldn't be an issue because players only have one portal to leave through and 78 to come from, but considering that this game has to compete to be chosen from a selection of 78 games in order for players to get teleported there in the first place, and 78 divided by 78 is 1, that basically amounts to one portal's worth of traffic. By the way, if you ever tell a math teacher of yours that I told you it was okay to do statistics math like this, I will be pressing charges. The end result is a 1 to 1 exiting and entering traffic ratio which doesn't help the game at all. This is of course a major estimation, but based on it, I think it's safe to say that the benefit that the Metaverse Game Network has to most games is nowhere near as great as you would expect. In fact, it seems like the only way to really benefit from this is by cutting out the exiting traffic factor entirely by not having an exit portal in your game, which, as we've discussed, is allowed, probably for an extra fee, but also automatically for Dubit's sponsored games. The only people who benefit then are rich people, brands, and of course, Dubit themselves. You might remember that a little while ago, I mentioned a game called Ripple Reef. It has three identical beta releases, all of which are connected to the Metaverse Game Network, and all of which don't have functioning exit portals. Two have portal models, but they're broken, and one just doesn't have them at all. Are the devs particularly rich? Well, no. Each beta release only has a few thousand visits apiece. That would mean they're not even eligible to be part of this network at all, right? Eh. Yes and no. 
Roblox is no longer the tiny, wholesome, block-based community that it once was. Those days are long gone, and I think we've all accepted that at this point. With every passing year, it becomes more and more professional and brand-oriented, constantly making more money, cementing itself further into the gaming community, and attracting the attention of more and more brands and companies. That comes with great rewards. And downsides. Dubit is shady, and as the main company that they work with, the responsibility falls on Roblox to keep them regulated and transparent, and they're unfortunately not doing that right now. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in a world where the only way a game can survive on Roblox is by shilling out money to a third-party company in order to put an out-of-place looking backdoor to another possibly advertisement brutal game in their main lobby. So I think the responsibility falls on us to renounce these portals. If you ever see one in a game you play, don't enter it, it's probably not worth your time. I'm not saying you have to boycott any game that has these portals, because I really don't think it's the game dev's fault. As we've discussed, Dubit does have ways of keeping their true colors under wraps, so if I were to bet on it, I would say that even the devs don't know the true effects of this network. But please, if you're ever offered a choice between staying in an actual game or supporting a weird manipulative tech company, I urge you to stick to the former. Because Dubit refuses to provide these themselves, I'll be leaving a link to what I'm pretty sure is a complete list of all the Metaverse Game Network's games in the description, as well as links to Dubit's websites if you'd like to do more research of your own. I have a feeling that there's still some more stuff about this company that we've yet to uncover, and your support would be of great help. Also, I urge you to share this video with your friends, not just because it supports my channel, but because more people need to know about this. And that's about it. Happy 2023, stay away from Dubit, and I've been Nitro Lord, and I'll see you all next time.